welcome everybody. Um, I'm Rhonda Irish from the town of Wilton and today we have with us Jeff Reed from CV and Mahar and Jessica Kimbo from, I never remember the name of the company. TJ DNA Landscape Architects and Planners. Thank you. They have been working on our um, Wilson Lake retaining wall project for the town of Wilton. First coming up with a um, conceptual design so that we can um, eventually move forward on that design all the way to um, putting in a new retaining, retaining wall and fixing up of the area around the retaining wall. So I've already met with Jeff and Jessica and they have presented with me their two final um, diagrams that they've got on this after they met with um, both department heads, select board members, and the general public to get ideas from people. I think they had three or four different ideas before and they've narrowed it down to two. So I will let Jeff and Jessica take over and um, show us the two designs and to explain why they put in what they did um, and what the differences are between the two. And following that, we will take questions. Thanks, Rhonda. Can you uh, enable me to share my screen? Or whoever's in charge of the, whoever the host is. We got it. I think there's a couple of us hosting. Can you do okay. it? Okay. Let's see here. Oh, yep, there we go. Great, okay. So um, I'm Jessica and uh, I'm the landscape architect and Jeff, who's also here to present with me is the uh, civil engineer. And so um, my job is to kind of think about big picture functionality of the space. And then Jeff's job is to sort of truth test it and make sure it can really be built and work in the real environment. So um, to, it's important that both of us are here to kind of introduce it to you. I'm going to um, take the lead on presenting the concept and I'll let Jeff just sort of jump in whenever there's something that you'd like to contribute. Um, and I'm going to share my screen to go over these couple concepts. Okay, so um, can you see the screen with the plan? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, great. So I'm going to, um, so we have concept A and B, and you may have already received these. I think that Rhonda mentioned that she may have sent them out to uh, all of you or some of you, um, but I'll walk you through the big picture concept for each of them. Um, and keep in mind that this is very high level design. Um, items like benches and lighting and planting and paving materials. These are things that will be fleshed out as we um, dive deeper into the design. But at this point, we're looking at basic site circulation, general configuration, basic material. Um, and so thinking at a relatively high level, once we get this down and we've have a, a a decision as to the direction we want to go, then uh, we can start to implement some of those finer details that I know we received a lot of comments on at the last meeting. Um, so don't think that those items have been forgotten. They're just not included in this concept. So I'm going to work um, actually beginning on the uh, the right hand side of the screen and kind of working to the to the left. And um, the reason for that is that the, the right hand side of the screen in the two concepts that I'm going to present remains consistent. So the real change or, um, or very variation between the two concepts really exists around the swim area down here. So we'll start in the in the section that is um, basically into its sort of final iteration for review. So um, the idea is to allow visitors potentially on, um, on foot to kind of come down, uh, establishing a new crosswalk here from the downtown into what becomes sort of a linear park space here. This uh, is a, a paved or hardscaped area that would be curbless for uh, utility trucks to kind of pull in and um, ad address the, the pump house here. Um, in a few of the iterations prior, we had uh, some uh, embedded seating into the slope here to allow people to sit and view the lake. That got some mixed reviews. Some people liked it. Some people thought it was too much. So what we've done here in this concept is we just have one row of seating that's actually in the landscape. So you could kind of come down here, walk on the grass and actually sit on a big granite block and look out to the lake if you chose to do so. Sort of a different type of integrated seating. Uh, and then a basic pathway kind of meandering along um, this linear park space and the threshold between the landscape and the lake is um, is a riprap. Um, so not a retaining wall that exists today, but something um, that is akin to uh, some images here that um, 
that I have on the screen. And maybe Jeff, this might be a point for you to sort of jump in and just talk about this application here on the lakefront as a, um, some options that we have or kind of what it does with the, with the wave action and why it's a good option. Sure. So, um, so we had a, a couple of different things that we wanted to consider. Uh, most importantly, some feedback from uh, local residents in terms of wave action down at this end of the, uh, of the lake. Uh, you know, we've got probably a couple of miles of fetch coming down uh, when the wind blows right prevailing. Uh, there are some fairly sizable waves. Um, you know, we had options uh, with how we wanted to address the replacement of the, of the, the stone. Um, at the end, you know, they, they ranged from uh, a very gentle living shoreline um, to uh, hard structure, vertical wall, similar, very similar to what's, uh, what's existing uh, down at the end. Based on, uh, again, feedback from, uh, from residents, um, you know, there were, there were I guess, people who favored each. What we've selected here uh, kind of goes right down the middle. Um, some of the advantages of uh, of this is it, it's it's not it's not as structural uh, as a as a bulkhead uh, or as or as uh, expensive as a, as a bulkhead or a, or a concrete wall. It's still going to provide kind of a natural um, a natural view, you know, with the with the stone. As you can see on Jess's screen, I'm looking at the upper right, will probably be the closest to what we're looking at here, and maybe even the photo just underneath that. Um, and it will also provide some deadening and minimize reflection of, uh, of waves uh, coming down the lake. Uh, what can happen right now is they'll actually reflect and, and bounce back towards uh, the, the boat landing area um, and it can just create a very unstable situation down at that end. Um, in terms of speed of construction and economy of construction, I think the riprap or, or even a more of a rounded stone, uh, similar to what we have here, will be a good, like I said, middle of the road option um, for, uh, for that portion of the project. So you can see that um, is represented in the diagram here, extending from the um, from the bridge here over to the boat launch landing, and then continuing until the um, the current divide between the older wall and the newer wall that we're um, hoping to to leave intact. Um, so that's sort of this this portion of the um, of the waterfront, and now getting into the um, area that's sort of the designated swim viewing um, parking area. Um, currently today, there's a very narrow walk, as you are all familiar with, um, sort, of, sort of undefined parking, and then we have one access access point to um, allow people to kind of enter the water. And there's another um, seasonal access point done with a, uh, just a, a metal uh, ladder into the water. So what we're proposing here is that we establish by, um, by recessing steps uh, in through the, um, through the existing wall, another more permanent access. So you'll have swimmers being able to access the lake from um, this side, as well as from this side, really kind of defining the swim area. And in, in this concept, uh, we've maintained the angle parking that exists today. So we have 17 spaces today. We would have 17 spaces in the future. We've shown this as paved and we imagine there would be a curb here separating the walkway from the parking. And then we have a six foot walkway that would be um, located along the waterfront. Um, in this uh, situation where we have an improved uh, walkway immediately adjacent to the water. Uh, we imagine that some sort of handrail is going to be required for permitting. When we make an improvement, um, we need to bring it up to code. And so this walkway along the waterfront may require um, that handrail. And then of course we have access here to the park across the street through, our, um, through a crosswalk. So um, this is option A, and you'll see as I jump the screen over to option B, you'll see what shifts, and I'm just gonna do it a couple times so you can kind of see the jump. You'll see everything 
that is on the right hand side of the screen remains unchanged and really what's changing as we jump from option A to B is the configuration of the parking. So our, our entry point here stays the same. Um, so the swim area is still defined as, as consistent between both concepts. And what's really changing here is we still have 17 parking spaces. This time the configuration is through parallel parking so that um, motorists can come in here, they can pull in this way and, um, and park this way along the waterfront. What this does is it opens up 12 feet of grass between the edge of the waterfront and where that six foot walkway is gonna be. So you'll have your 12 foot of grass, six feet of walkway, and then you'll have about 10 feet of parking uh, in the parallel parking space to sort of fill that. Um, what this does uh, is address some of the, um, the congestion that exists in the current configuration. So we heard a lot of comments from the public about um, cars pulling in and out, kids running around swimming, um, parents trying to watch their kids swimming, and it being a very sort of congested, a lot happening, and really just six feet between the water's edge and where your cars would be. Really with this, um, this median over here, sort of the delegated sort of open space in front of the swim area. And by by changing the configuration, this pulls everything away, um, opening up more space for parents to watch the kids swim, um, kids to kind of pull themselves in and out of the water at their two locations or even kind of up and over the wall without getting into the walkway or the parking. Um, and um, it also eliminates the need to have the uh, handrail along the edge of the waterfront um, because the walkway is pulled back 12 feet. There's nothing to protect. There's no um, pedestrian um, pathway that needs to be addressed um, with, with the code requirement along the waterfront. So we can eliminate that. Um, again, the crosswalk still exists over to the park. Everything else remains the same. So really, those are kind of the, the two configurations that we'd love to hear feedback on. And Jeff, anything you want to add in before we start to hear? Um, um, yeah, I, was, I was thinking about jumping in on this now or, or maybe waiting to respond to questions. I know that... Um, you know, we had discussed uh, the parking configuration in option B uh, before, and it received some mixed reviews. Um, I can say from an engineering and from a maintenance perspective, um, you know, option B is, is, I believe, the stronger option uh, where we have more of a parallel parking situation. You don't have vehicles pointing and directly uh, in, towards the, uh, in towards the lake, uh, aside from the additional space that it provides for uh, for swimmers and, and, and swimmers' parents. Um, uh, I know that that area in front of the, lake, in front of the, uh, the concrete wall right now is, is kind of the popular area uh, to swim. And it, it's just nice that it provides a little bit more green space, a little bit more area uh, for them to, um, uh, for them to, to watch their kids. Uh, some of the other uh, considerations here that, you know, we had included you know, in this, I know that there was a comment from, uh, you know, the fire chief and the fire department that they'll, you know, they wanted space down here uh, so that they could come in, uh, drop a hose and test pumping equipment. You know, this option here is still going to provide that. Um, again, it's just a, it's just a, a better situation for uh, vehicle traffic and a better situation for pedestrians. Overall, it's, it's safer and uh, it'll be, uh, I think, more functional um, with the advantage of it'll be a little easier to maintain as well. So we'd love to hear um, any feedback, uh, suggestions, questions. Jessica, this is Wynn Miller. Uh, I would like to just raise the question on the upper area. It looks like you've entered a lot of grass to the upper side uh, of the before the bridge. Before the bridge, between the town and the bridge. And it looks to me like that might make it difficult for a truck pulling a large uh, boat trailer okay. to make that turn to cross into the boat launch area. <clears throat> I'm talking specifically about um, boats coming from the town, trying to make that turn, it would be almost impossible. Those coming from the getting to Canal Street from behind the bank uh, area is an awfully hard turn also to make. Uh, and but right now they've been coming down uh, Main Street to, or maybe it's J Street, 
the road that comes from Route 2 and making that turn, that might be an easier approach now. They couldn't make the left turn and then the right turn before, but it looks like it might be almost a straight turn now. But that has always been a difficult thing for people pulling large boats. And we do have about 25 to 30 pontoon boats on the lake that have to be entered at some point in time. Thanks, thanks for that comment. It's it's interesting. I'm going to go back and just look and see um, see if the, we have a plan that actually has it. Of course, the only plan of existing that I have has a big arrow running through it. Okay. Um, that shows. So, right, Jeff. I don't know if you want to speak to. Well, yeah. So so and and just to make sure that I that I understand what you're talking about here, when you're talking about coming from coming from downtown, so across this page, you'd be coming. We from uh, from right to left and then making the turn uh, into the boat launch area across the bridge? Yes. Okay, so, so we, that's that's something that we have, that's that's gonna stay as it is right now. Oh, okay. This is yeah, unchanged yeah. So, here. So, so that's, uh, all, all that is, is it's, uh, it's a highlighted uh, aerial photo on that side, but all of our work uh, is going to be, at this point, is gonna be the area uh, so basically from the bridge, okay, all the way over to the left to where the, across the whole site to where that existing stair is that goes down. Um, part of what we were going to do as a, as an added value here was to, to kind of provide some additional kind of high level master planning of what other things could be done in this area in the future to improve, uh, the area and, yeah, it looks like there is a little bit of space there. If in the future we wanted to square that off, that intersection off a little bit to, I think the street there is Lake Street, right? Right. Um, to improve access from the east as well as the west, then that, it looks like there's a little bit of room there to, to, to do that. But that was, uh, reconfiguring yep. that intersection was outside the scope of, of what we're trying to provide here. Okay, it, it looked to me like you changed it because of the all the greenery, the greenery in there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, that's that's all existing. I think all that we're going to do is uh, is we're talking about uh, painting out the crosswalk um, to go over to the existing sidewalk on that side, and then all of the work for this project was going to start. You can see that uh, in this plan we show kind of an expanded. Well, it's the light gray. It it will be the concrete or it can be pavement. Uh, but an expanded area there, which would allow uh, uh, public works to come in and park a vehicle next to the pump house if they ever have to do any maintenance. Jeff, take an engineering look at that intersection because our boats coming from marinas have expressed concern with getting there, making that turn into that that, that bridge. Well, and it's, it's definitely not, uh, not an ideal angle. Um, 90 degrees is obviously best. Um, and maybe coming behind the old bank was when the bridge at one point was closed off uh, one summer was horrible. They almost could not get the boats in. If you've got a big pontoon boat on one of those trailers, it will not turn. I mean, yeah, sure. Not. Sure, sure. The picture that you're showing now, showing that car in the picture, that's where the, the boat is having to turn now. And that, mm -hmm. that they can make except there is a slight decline or turn and you've got a stop sign here. So these cars are going, are blocking this area and they're concerned. You've got concern with traffic coming this way sure. from, from town that is not gonna stop there. So uh, it, it makes it awkward. Uh, somebody from town and down almost can't make that turn at all. Sure. The ideal way would be to come the other way on Lake Road and turn left onto the boat ramp, but to get to Lake Road is not an easy thing to do. Uh, you can't come uh, down Prospect Street because it's too too narrow and too too much of a hill. You almost right. have to go all the way down to uh, maybe uh, to the area where uh, Walker Hill Road comes through, and uh, and turn there, and then come down that down the road that way. Sure. That's, that's, that's definitely something we can look at in, in design and, and certainly propose uh, some ideas on that. I mean, initially, you know, we may be able just to increase the radius on that side. Um, it would involve, uh, you know, pulling that, uh, 
kind of that curb back, you know, the, the crosswalk would be a little bit longer. Um, even if that's something that, um, you know, that we do, you know, we, we can, we can reload the relocate, excuse me, the curb, uh, and the sidewalk and kind of paint that area out. Um, there, there are certainly things that we can do to expand that radius that would help that turn from that direction. Thank if you. that's something that, um, yeah, that we want yeah. to include with this project. Jeff, I, a question, yeah. does that, because of where it is, does that create a shoreland zoning ordinance or shoreland uh, NERPA application? Because we're doing work within uh, 75 feet of the, sh of the shoreline? It, potentially, um, you know, and that's, that's why we would want to take a closer look at that to see um, if it were something that we wanted to include with the retaining wall project. Um, we would obviously want to structure the permitting to include that work. Um, otherwise, we could we could provide kind of a, a preliminary or higher level uh, concept design that could be accomplished uh, later, um, and would probably require its own its own permitting at that point. Um, some of the things, honestly, that we're that we're looking at right now include um, outside the scope of this project, um, just. Uh, we're, we're helping to try to identify some available funding that may be available for additional improvements in this area, including uh, the boat launch and, and kind of that whole circulation through there. Um, I would say that an improvement like this would be more appropriate for, for that other project. Um, you know, we, we've got, uh, you know, we kind of have a budget and a scope uh, for, for what we're presenting right here you know, that, that basically involves the retaining wall replacement. Um, and to go too much beyond that would, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be expanding scope and fee probably. Uh, but there's certainly something that we can include in our uh, master planning for the area as something that could be done um, with other work down in this, in this part of town. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Got a couple questions if I can jump in. You bet. Okay, uh, for those who might not know, I'm Frank Donald, I'm the Parks and Recreation Director, and I kind of, uh, I'll be left with this baby to maintain <laughs> a lot of it. Uh, so some of my concerns, questions would be as a taxpayer, number one, but number two is as the guy left to deal with this stuff. Number, and first off, plan B, I love it. Uh, compared to what I was first hearing and seeing stuff, I think as opposed to the solid wall, I didn't really like the idea of riprap, but this this uh, second photo that you showed, uh, Along the edge with some grass there. I, I think that uh, I think that's the catch. Me, yeah. This uh, the bottom one on the right. I, I yeah. I think yeah. that fit in really well aesthetically, but also from a maintenance standpoint. So I, I think you're really onto something right there. Uh, that's that's one thing. Um, we talked about the two uh, the existing entry point for people for swimming, and I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth here with ideas as I wrote them down. So we'll jump back and forth maybe a little bit. Uh, so one there, and then one up where the old wall and the new wall come together. Uh, exactly. Uh, so I like those ideas. And still, uh, would it make sense? I mean, if we can get that far enough up, um, I'm amazed how many people uh, liked the ladder. And, and certainly, could it, but I guess what I'm looking at is if we can space it out to three options, because it's, at times is there's an issue with dogs and crowding and that sort of stuff. If, if that can be far enough so we can almost spread out a little bit, is that going to be doable? I mean, to put that ladder far enough that it, uh, the second set of steps up more toward the bridge side far enough away from where the existing ladder goes? Uh, we, we, we could. Um, the, thought, uh, the thought process here was that there was going to be um, adequate spacing uh, by basically having a set of stairs at either end of the concrete wall. Yeah, and that, that and would that, be sufficient to separate right. um, those two uses. And we were thinking that, you know, possibly one area, uh, maybe over on the right, you know, at the contact between, and, and we picked the end of the, the end of the concrete wall, just because again, it's a matter of uh, spacing and a matter of economy. You know, yeah. if we don't have to, if we don't have to cut into the wall, if we don't have to do that sort of thing, we sure. can construct something. Sure. You know, so right I, just, just, just a thought, if, it could, if yeah. it, it could be moved up without a whole lot of expense and still leave the ladder, it just gives us three access points. Because like I say, sometimes it, 
it's kids occasionally unfortunately it's with people drinking and that sort of thing and, and moms are not real comfortable taking a couple kids down there and if there's three spaces and they kind of spread out a little bit that just, so, just just a thought okay so 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 just building on that thought and again I, i'm just trying to to collect as much info and and as we can at this point um so would uh so are you thinking a, th a third access point or the, the, basically the, the, the aluminum stairs that you have right now? Well, I just um, figured- At the center of the wall or right, would you- right, right where it is. I mean, cause uh, if those that know me well, I'm a penny pincher. So rather than putting a third set of steps access point, if we can leave the ladder and just have a, like I said, I like the idea of the, another access uh, farther down the wall, like you guys were mm -hmm. talking, just how over far down is practical, I guess, without a lot of expense, like I say, without having to cut into the bank. A whole lot yeah so just just a thought okay um and then uh as far as again uh maintenance type of an issue that that rock edge there uh and, and uh, probably not a, it's going to be an issue with a, a lot of stuff growing up through yep. that rock do you do you think um, so, so, I mean, there will be some vegetation that will, that will, uh, grow in there over time. And that's, that's kind of what you plan for. Um, what we will have here, I mean, there will be, uh, a, a, a geotextile separation fabric. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that in, we'll lay that bank back. We'll put down some fabric, uh, that will help with erosion. It, it's basically there to prevent the uh the soil from leaching out through the stone but it'll have the added benefit of of prohibiting some weed growth so i get yeah i get that it makes sense and looking long term is a good thing because long term like i said chance that time the weeds come up through there i'll be gone <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> any luck. Uh, and i as far as again maintenance idea i love the idea of a, the grassy space and, and down near where the parking and such is going to be as opposed to uh, a railing for a couple of rain railing eventually going to need maintenance, whether it be wood, right. metal, whatever. It also cuts down the view, you know, for if people want to sit there and watch out through. If they don't have that wall there, I think the grass is much more uh, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, one of my concerns with that, and I think you addressed it by the parallel parking, but anybody that goes through there right now, they know that at times, boy, that some of those vehicles stick out uh, fairly right. far into the road. And and so if the, if the 12 foot or so strip of grass works and we can still get the cars off the road, I think that's a win-win, but it, it's it's a concern during the summer when it's really busy. Cars, uh, especially bigger trucks, you know, and that sort of thing, they're, and they're packed out into the road pretty hard. So just something to kind of keep in mind. And it sounds like you've addressed that certainly some anyway, but that, that would be a concern that w with that parking that we can get the cars still off the road. Right. Okay. And one of the... Th one of the things we were thinking of uh, in particular to, well, I don't know if necessarily you, but public works as well, um, you know, winter maintenance of an area like this, um, you know, there's no, there's no backblading. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep, sure. Yep. Everything, uh, everything just gets winged over. And then, uh, I mean, even if they wanted to, to plow and clear these spaces, you know, it's, it's all same direction. Okay, I guess the last thought I had, maybe a little bit right now, maybe I think of something later, but now we're talking these parallel parking spots, but as it is right now, it's kind of a gravelly area and, and there's no defined, uh, I mean, is that going to be, what's the pavement material kind of going to be underneath it so that, I mean, it's going to be striped out, that sort of thing. I mean, I think if it's just left to people's uh, imagination, we could get into something scary there. So I just wonder what the thought was for a type of a paving material and, and, and striping out of sorts. So, and, and, and for that very reason, uh, we would expect that this would be, you know, we, we'd make sure it had adequate gravel base. It'd be a paved surface. It would be striped um, so that it would uh, clearly outline the parking places to make sure that we, you know, optimize people's use I, here. I, I, okay, I was kind of assuming that, but I know in the past there's been some resistance to paving that area. So I was just wondering if you weren't paving and how that was going to be marked out. But if, we, if we're no. not paving, then it's easy enough. Well, and, and in addition to the paving, um, again, we're, 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 we're talking about uh, some form of curbing as well okay. to separate the sidewalk from the parking space. Um, and again, that's, that's as much of a safety issue as it is anything else. Well, that's it. In other words, you're not, and you're going to have people packing all over that grass. They're going to pack up as close as they possibly can if there isn't a curbing there. So. Right, right. And, and, that's, and that's, that's why we wanted to do that. So with, with the curbing, 
to provide a little bit of a you know six inch elevation on the walk um, it makes sense to you know extend that pavement all the way to the curb um, it'll also help us with uh, when we get into more of the meat of the design and the stormwater and the runoff what we're we going to do with that uh, it'll help us to uh, control that as well and, and it still allows like you said the fire trucks to come up and do their thing there plus we also have these uh different uh, pool companies that like to pull up there and, and at times they pulled up pretty close and I think really putting some stress on that wall and if, if we can keep them away from that wall but they can still get access to it again another win-win right. type of deal. Right. Okay I guess that takes care of what I got. Thank you. Okay. Jeff hi Peter Campion here. Uh, hi. Can I make yeah um Generally, we, we like the, the plans, Donna and I, and I should explain, we live right opposite the, uh, the, the rock wall. In fact, I don't know whether you can see, but that's our view that we're looking at right now from the kitchen window. Um, but okay. I would say that if, you, if, you, if, the, if we decide to go with riprap, it needs to be large enough that it's immovable. I think mm -hmm. from, our, from what we've seen in the 25 years that we've been daily looking at that rock wall, most of the vandalism has probably, uh, sorry, most of the repairs have probably originated in vandalism with people moving stones bodily from it. So if you're going to use riprap, it's going to have to be sufficiently large that people can't get their feet under it and push it into the lake or certainly pick it up. Sure, sure. And, and just so you know, when we actually go, there, there are um, engineering calculations that we'll use to actually size the individual pieces of that stone that are based on um, fetch. So basically the, the length of the lake um, and the potential wave action on it, because uh, again, from a from a design perspective, we want to make sure not so much. I mean, vandals usually doesn't come into it, but you want to make sure that the stone is large enough to withstand the wave action and still stay in place. So generally, what happens is you wind up with some larger stone, but that's something that we'll definitely take into uh, consideration. One of the things too that I've uh, I've noted, you know, here and. Uh, riprap is is kind of the common um, common product that you would use, but it sounds like there's some really strong uh, feedback and preference towards more of a, a rounded type stone. Riprap is a, is a crushed material, so it's very sharp, very angular, and that's good because it it locks together and it, it gets very stable. Um, but you know, a lot of the stone that we're seeing here, so you'd say. You know, kind of the upper left is more of a riprap and the upper right is more of a kind of like yeah. a river stone or, or that sort of thing. If that is the look that is uh, desired here, then we can certainly figure that into our, our design and our calculations. Okay, so, thanks. Okay. Excellent. That, and thank you. That's, that's a great comment. This is when again, and, and Jeff, you mentioned uh, water treatment, and I like that. And I wondered if you could just elaborate a little bit on the water treatment plan for taking the water from that curb in, in concept B, which I like very much. Mm -hmm. uh, that would obviously right now with the gravel there, it's a little bit more that's impervious, but uh, the grass, although it looks pretty, is not doing much in the way of keeping erosion from going into the lake. Uh, so if we've got some treatment concepts that are being taken into consideration here for that water running off from the curb, uh, maybe it's going to be treated by some kind of catch basin and then that uh, would not be a detention but so much as a cleaning basin. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so there, there are a number of different um, products and, and treatment devices that you can actually construct uh, you know, basins and, and filtration systems and that sort of thing um, that you can that you can use to treat water. I mean, not only for a, a quantity or a peak flow of runoff, but also you can treat the actual water quality so that you make sure that water, for example, coming off the road um, is cleaned uh, before it goes into the lake, uh, which, uh, you know, everybody is everybody's interested in. We know that we do have one uh, kind of stormwater treatment area. It's very close to, if you can actually see the caption for uh, the walking path through the linear area space where that leader comes through. Uh, there's a little turnout and a swale there right now. 
uh, and that's what that was put in uh, for originally. Um, it, there, there'll be a there'll be a line here that will uh, will kind of walk through design, you know, uh, DEP permitting uh, for stormwater is typically uh, one of the initial criteria is the size of your project. You know, are you disturbing more or less than an acre is, is one of the first questions that the DEP will ask uh, when they determine how much treatment you are required to provide. Um, where this project is, it's relatively small from an area perspective because it's, it, it's long, but it's fairly skinny. Um, you know, we can definitely uh, propose a couple of different ideas uh, to provide stormwater treatment. Um, again, I mean, there's, there are catch basins right now uh, on the road that discharge directly to the lake. Um, and I think, uh, I think kind of taking a look at that and maybe improving some of those options, um, something that we'll, we'll be working through during design. Is that stormwater mitigation? Hi, sorry to jump in. Um, is that stormwater mitigation within the scope and budget as it currently is understood right now? Um, we, we can, we can provide some, we can provide some higher level design. I mean, the, the scope and budget right now is, is primarily for the, um, for the wall, uh, replacement. Um, but we, we did include a little bit in there for, for stormwater, knowing that we were going to have to address, uh, some of the existing uh, conditions on site. Does that answer the question there? Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. Jeff, this is Rob. You use the term traffic calming measures. Can mm -hmm. you give us some examples of what those might be, what you would recommend, and is it too part of the scope of this project? So, so traffic calming um, would be, you know, any anything that you could do to uh, I mean, the, the, the goal is to improve safety. It's to slow the cars down. Um, with a linear section like this, that gets kind of tricky um, just because, uh, you know, there's only so, I mean, typical measures and feel free to jump in here, Jess, but, mm -hmm. you know, there are either, um, there are curves, there are undulations, um, like even a, a speed table, for example, probably could be considered a traffic calming measure because it's designed to slow the traffic down. Um, you know, there's only so much that we're going to be able to do, you know, within the roadway itself. I mean, through traffic is going to be uh, through traffic. You know, what we are trying to do is provide a little bit more of a buffer in a space between uh, the traffic and between the pedestrian use. Um, you know, when we were out there, uh, I know for the, for the pre-bid meeting, you know, there was a younger couple um, and they were, you know, they were, they were, they were jogging around the lake and, you know, they're running right down the middle of the, you know, of the, of the westbound traffic lane because, you know, there was, there was no walk, there was no place else for them to be. Um, kind of what we're trying to provide here, and especially with this option is, is a separation from, uh, from vehicle traffic and, and the pedestrian use. Um, you know, some of that can be accomplished as well through through uh, you know vegetation plantings, landscaping, that sort of thing. But right. um, there there but, could be potentially even if it's just put out seasonally, so as not to when people are using this area more actively, you could put um, sort of a vertical, um, whether it's like a planter or something, kind of right here at the crosswalk, and then maybe another one here. You know, we wouldn't want to interrupt the intersection, but just something vertical in the center of the road to slow people down. You know, assign you know, children at play even. Um, the parallel parking itself is actually a traffic calming measure. Generally, when you have parking on a, um, on a street, that's something that's going to, um, to slow traffic down typically. Um, when we get the survey done and actually see kind of what right of way we have to play with, um, you know, we, there's even possibility to potentially put in some kind of, you know, a narrow median or something that may be more permanent, but um, it was just, we, we threw the note in there um, so that we could keep it in the conversation of looking at different ways to kind of just bring traffic down um, sure. 
in, in this particular area. So nothing's really been defined as to whether it's a speed table or a median or some sort of vertical um, element um, that may even be movable in the road. But um, it's we're just thinking about that as a, a part of making this a safe environment. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes, I have. Uh, I this is. Um, I'm excited to see this. It's. I, I. I see that there really are some very difficult choices here. I. I'm glad to see a version that doesn't have the handrail. Um, that's absolutely wonderful. But parallel parking. Um, is going to be a big change for all those drivers who, because the drivers will not be able to just sort of pull in and be there for five minutes while they're drinking their coffee quite so easily. Um, but I see that that's a trade-off. So I guess that is the version that I would um, go for. Although also it takes longer to parallel park. As Jessica says, that's partly why it's a, it becomes a traffic calming device, but that may also um, rile some people. I certainly agree with Frank Donald about putting in a third access point, having a, the ladder is a wonderful thing because for one thing, we, um, we're right across the from from this wall and we see the all the people who come and sit on the steps as they're watching their children, for instance, that people who use that just as a hangout spot that might not be quite so true in that middle access point, but I'll bet it would be still. Um, so having that as a third thing is a great idea. And then I would also say in terms of the riprap, I love the rounded look of the riprap, sort of more like the old wall. That's just great. Although I do uh, also um, uh, corroborate Peter's idea that, that people will uh, move and hang around the rocks and shift them if they, uh, if they feel like it. So yeah, they should be big. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just great a, feedback. Thank you. A follow-up question to this <clears throat> third this third access. Um, if it, we if if the um, ladder is um, something that wants to be kept, is it possible to have that be sort of in the center of these these two access points? I mean, these are about three hundred feet apart you know, here. Um, so we have quite a large area sort of defined as the swim area, but is, is that what you're suggesting? Having that ladder be in the middle of the two, or are you talking when I hear a third access point wanting to expand this? No, I, I agree with what, the, what Frank said. If the ladder's in good condition, just leave that where it is and they right. don't need to be evenly spaced. Okay. Out. Okay, yeah. so we can kind of leave the two permanent ones, and this may be permanent as well. I'm not sure if the ladder comes out in the winter or not, but um, that can sort of be centered here is what you're suggesting. Okay. That would be my thought, you know, if we could have, have them somewhat spaced out between them, and the ladder does come out uh, in the winter time. And, uh, but if, it need, if we needed to move that ladder up or down a little bit, if that's a simpler way, uh, the bracket that mounts to that wall could be removed and we can move that ladder up or down the wall a little bit if that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah just, Frank. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a fairly simple thing. I mean, and, and you know, just from a, like I said, from a, from a plan set uh, preparation, I mean, that basically what we'll do, is, and if that ladder's in good shape, is we can just outline it on, on the plan, you know, ladder to be, you know, provided by, it, it's, it's the town, right? Right. Um, and you can basically put that wherever you want. Right. Yeah. So whatever, whatever work makes the most sense and saves a buck or two, like I said, if we need to move it, you know, 50 feet or whatever, one way or the other, whatever makes sense to, to spread it out, that, that would be a relatively easy fix. Okay. Yeah. Jeff? Yes. Hi. Peter Campion here. Uh, before we leave the business of parallel versus staggered parking, um, as I sit here, Watch, looking out at the uh, the area that's parking at being parked on at the moment, there are five cars doing exactly what people do all day here, especially in the mid late morning and even after dark. They are sitting facing the lake. The drivers have come down here to 
I guess, drink coffee and just look at the lake. And if everybody has to be parallel parked, that is a, a use of the amenity that will be no longer possible. So what I'm going to suggest is maybe we should be looking at a hybrid between parallel parking and the current diagonal parking and have most of the parking spaces as being uh, parallel to the road axis, but having maybe three or four or five spaces that people can just head into to continue this use that has been here for many, many years. So I'm going to say, uh, uh, respond with a couple points to that. In looking yeah. first at the hybrid idea, ideally from a swimming, you know, establishing this as an open space to emphasize um, the use of the swimming and the water access, it would make sense to me to put those uh, angle parkings over kind of on this side. However, that puts us in the middle of an intersection over here because you wouldn't want to have people pulling yeah. out in the middle of an intersection. So that's, you know, this right. is, the, so, so what that does is it puts that parallel, that perpendicular or angled parking um, into the swim area. So it's, it's inevitable that you're going to cut into your water access, your open space to establish that. And second, just to, um, to respond in how I've seen use in other waterfronts, um, Parallel parking is the most common parking that we see on, on waterfronts. I live down in Kennebunk, Kennebunk Beach. There's parallel parking the entire length of the beaches, um, several miles of parallel parking, and people do exactly the same thing. They pull in there night, evening, day, morning. They have coffee. I go down there with my family for lunch in the winter, and we'll sit in our car. Yes, our faces are not, the driver is not facing directly towards the ocean, but it is, um, it, I wouldn't say there's a visual impediment. And I, I never think, well, I wish our car was facing this opposite direction as a passenger. I'm sitting there and looking out um, as a driver, it's simply turning your head. Uh, it's, I still think that that activity is gonna continue to function. It's gonna look different, but I don't think people are gonna stop parking their car to enjoy the view. It's just a different configuration for the car. I see. Yeah, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that I agree with you that people will, it will not stop people using that, but I hear your point. Yeah, yeah. There's, there, well, actually, you can't see down the lake. I was actually looking over at the boat ramp area, and there's parking over there facing the lake, but you, you wind up looking back at our project uh, <laughs> more, than, more than down the length. Thank like you. anything else, it's, it's, uh, it's about choices and about compromise. Um, I, I mean, I personally think that the benefits to uh, to pedestrians and the actual use down there of, of swimming and everything else, um, you know, outweigh the ability to, you know, to park directly facing the, the lake. Um, you know, there, there are some other, um, some other reasons for, for kind of vehicle circulation. And, and again, kind of that separation um, and that safety element uh, as well that, that I kind of favor the parallel. Um, but certainly if there's, uh, you know, again, what we're, what we're trying to do and why we're, why we're reaching out and, and having this meeting as well as the public meetings that we've had is that we're trying to gauge, um, you know, feedback and interest from the people who are actually going to yeah. be using it. Yeah, so yeah. Jeff and Jessica, please bear in mind that the uh, swimming uh, aspect of this is something that probably occupies three months of the year. Whereas people are down there looking at the lake currently in their diagonal parked mode 12 months of the year. Sure. And, and certainly if that's something um, that, you know, when, when we go back with, with staff and with, with town representatives and that sort of thing, if, if, if there's an interest in, in maintaining a portion of that, then, then we can certainly include that in the design. Okay, thank you. I, I think that might be a, a real good idea. I think Peter brings up a legitimate point is it's three months but it's heavy traffic the swimming piece of it but the rest of the year it isn't so if there's a way to combine the two uh, I because like I say old habits die hard and if we go with just the parallel parking uh, I got an idea our police department might be uh, quite busy down there early on and they may be anyway uh, once it gets changed around but I, yeah if there's a way to to, to blend that uh, that might be the best scenario how many uh, parking spaces would be satisfactory if you're looking to establish a space for these to, people to pull over? Like a, just a few? Well, I think like Peter said right now, you're looking at 
four or five calves, right? And yeah, I that, think throughout, I, throughout, throughout spring and fall and winter, that's what I see typically from about like 5.30 in the morning sometimes. You'll have four or five people parked there having coffee or a donut or something looking out at the lake. And they go on, I, there are people who come down there after, after dark to watch the moon as well. Four or yeah. five spaces. Yeah, so four or five spaces like that, you know, throughout the day. So they're going to come, they're going to go, it's going to be different ones. And let's be realistic, even in the parallel spots, if it's at a slow time, people are still going to pull in there facing the parking lot and all likely facing the lake, even though it's striped out. I, I guess I guess my final comment on that, and again, um, it's something that if, if there's if there's the interest uh, in, in us doing that, then that's great. But um, and again, kind of just this is this is a, kind of a flow and a fuel thing as well. I mean, the place to put those parking spaces is is basically right in between those two intersections. So the second tree that we have in there, we're talking about that's that's the area to put them um, because then we're not backing out into intersections um, and that sort of thing. And that is going to impact kind of the flow and the use. Um, of the of the lawn and kind of the, the the park type area that we have there. So again, it's all about it's all about choices. Um, if that's if that's the direction that we want to go, then that's the direction we can take it. Um, Just uh, one one quick thought, I guess, on the packing. Uh, at least up into the, the crossroad into the Bass Park, uh, we have a lot of handicapped vans, people making access of the gazebo. Mm -hmm. uh, any thought of making at least one spot there somewhere the handicap accessible thing with it striped out so because what you're having is a lot of times they'll pull in there but somebody will pack so close to them they can't open the door and let down a ramp sure. Like, uh, sure. So that might be something that I don't know how people strongly people feel about that but I'm, I'm thinking that might be one to be worked in there I, I, I think you're absolutely right I think uh, you know looking at this in the parallel situation you know we can even make one of those uh, we, we can make one of those and we should make one of those um, ADA uh, accessible. Because we do get a lot of uh, a bigger, it, usually it, typically a bigger vans that will carry, you know, four and five people. Sometimes they're single, single people vans, certainly, sure. but, but more sure. often than not, it, it's a bigger van that has four, five, six people. So. Right. And, and, and just, just so you know, all of the, uh, like at, uh, at all the crosswalks, I mean, they'll be equipped with, uh, with ramps that are ADA accessible, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. So that, uh, you know, we're not, again, it's not our intent, I guess, at this point uh, to, to provide ADA access to the water necessarily, um, but certainly to the walk uh, so, that, so that everybody can enjoy this. So if we're going to go with a hybrid approach, um, how would that impact the walkway? Or is there a way that it could be designed so it doesn't impact the walkway? Um, when I, I use it as a citizen with my, my grandchild, one of the things that I do like about this approach here is I, I really don't like having to walk in the westbound lane behind the cars that might be pulling it in and out. Is there a way to engineer this so we still have a walkway if you have that hybrid approach? So what, what would happen is that you would have the walk uh, coming across the parallel spaces. If you were walking from, from uh, left to right, let's say, or, okay, so from right to left, exactly. It would jog out around those and then back in. And then you would have that section of walk along the top of the wall um, that would need a rail. Um, but you could, you could angle, you'd have, to, you'd have to do something like that, like uh, what Jess has shown right there. Thank you. I just, just want to add, because I have to go to another meeting at 11 o'clock. Okay. Just a couple of things. One is that I think you need to go back to plan A and look, just look at that. The choices are this or B. I don't think you can make a hybrid model that really works out there because people, it just, it's got to be one, my personal opinion, one or the other, not a hybrid. And From if people are worried standpoint. about that the view, sense. then concept A is the way we have to go. Um, Two is that the rip wrap and so forth. I've gotten some old pictures, Sawyer prints of the area. What we're headed back towards is what it used to be back in 1900, which is a good thing. And, and what I really like, which was one of my criteria is it had to have minimal maintenance. Uh, and Frank has certainly alluded to that, but I think you those, and I don't disagree with the view. I do not at all, 
I just think you need to make a choice between one and the other. A hybrid model will be a, a, a nightmare to try to manage out there. So those are my comments. I have to go because I have to go deliver petitions at 11 or start on my route. So I'll catch up with you and catch the rest of the comments later. But thank you. Good job. And thanks for everybody's input. Thanks, thank Tom. I think, I think Tom's right. And the fact that um, if you put the, if you have to move the walkway closer to the wall to get in the, the straight, those angled parking, you're going to have the, the rail marking uh, uh, blocking the view again. So it's kind of a trade off. And even though I know that it's the facing the lake with, that people have been doing for decades, I think they would get used to it and it would become the way Jessica describes it, that they would learn to parallel park and have to turn their head to look out. And I, I would agree with that. I would say that, you know, I've, I've lived in lots of tourist places. I come from Gloucester, Massachusetts, where if you're looking down the boulevard, we parallel park, we look out at the breakwater, Key West, Florida, it's, it's all parallel parking. So I know people I used to pulling in, and I think that's a good point that you said, if we did pull in and now all of a sudden there's a fence there, people are going to be equally, that change in itself, I think would cause people to be equally um, annoyed that there's a change. So I'm not quite sure we, we'd be able to find a good halfway point. I, I happen to think that the parallel parking in allowing joggers to be able to walk uh, or run in front of the cars uh, unimpeded without that jog makes sense to me. You know, one thing I do see um, in the beaches where people have to parallel park is they will park great facing the wrong way, especially in the off season in the, during the, during the, when it's really busy, that's a di different story. But if it's in the middle of winter and you're pulling down here and you just want to pull in so that you as a passenger can sit there and have your, your coffee or your, as a driver, excuse me, you can put yourself, it's not, you know, you shouldn't leave your car like that. Cause I don't know how legal it is to actually park that way and, and walk away, but um, you could pu pull pull in the opposite direction and then pull out and you're then you're right there facing you know your side window and that's your your lakefront view if it's if you're just a single passenger um i see that a lot i do that a lot i think you're right jessica i think that's exactly what will happen if they stay with the parallel park and people will during when the during the slow stretches like I said when it quote doesn't matter people will right. still pull up there as long as they're doing it when it's really busy and the cars and the kids got to mute there's a gazillion kids be bopping back and forth between the swimming and, and the park across the road and the parallel parking is a whole lot safer but like i said it, peter has a legitimate point people used to pulling up there and looking at it that way and, and they could still do that like i said during the slow spells which like right now it almost doesn't matter if you will <laughs> yeah but but there but there is a reason that um that it's parallel parking like this at most uh, shoreline or waterfront situations. I mean, it's, it's just, it's the most efficient and it makes the best use of the space for, for, for public use. Right. Yeah. We're working with such a narrow uh, threshold. I mean, right. from, um, from your right of way to the, to the lakefront, you know, it's less than 30 feet. And sure. so you can only do so much with 30 feet. The minute you turn a car on its side, you immediately open up the space for a, a lot more. Sure. Um, and I think uh, we also uh, want to avoid, um, and Jeff can speak to this from an engineer, but we want to avoid people pulling out into traffic as much as possible. I know um, I was a planner in Old Orchard Beach several years ago, and it was uh, illegal to actually establish parking that way because it just creates a dangerous situation, even in an angle parking, to pull it out onto a road. Um, it's just not as safe as a parallel. Right. Situation. Yeah, the, 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 the backing movement. Yeah, it's not as safe. Question for Jessica, if I could. Um, um, if I agree that plan B is, is uh, uh, good in many respects, um, is there a landscape design uh, element in the long range plan that would encourage people to get out of their cars and, and sit and enjoy the, the space without being in their car? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, we have the integrated seating up here, which is sort of pulling people in from the downtown, hopefully to walk downtown and have seating at the top of the hill. And I think there will be benches spaced throughout. Um, 
and to to provide people to an opportunity to come out um, and find a bench and sit down, um, we can um, establish uh, the benches in locations where we might have trees uh, to provide shade for those people. So on a hot day, um, there's more incentive to go and sit down on a on a bench. Um, but really, you just want to provide seating and amenities outside of the um, of your car, which I think option B does far better than option A does. So just by opening up that green space, we have room to play with using the landscape to pull people out um, of the vehicle. Thank you. The uh, idea of the trees and the, you know, the benches are a big deal. I mean, people are all of those things all year long. So definitely, even if it's down the road in the project, that needs to be figured in. And you mentioned the trees and, and uh, somebody that's far more knowledgeable than I am, maybe could come up with the right kind but obvious uh, one of the issues i've seen through the years is not only there but over by the uh, post office seems like whatever we plant for trees down there they get to a certain size and they die off and we we cut them down and we replant i've seen that a lot in my 30 odd years here so something that's hardy next to the water tra foot traffic i don't know what the issue is but they tend to die mm -hmm. off before they you know after they reach a certain height so something that yeah. can still provide shade but stands up to, I guess it must be the foot traffic or something around it. Yeah. Well, yeah, how, or what's how much, or Frank, what's can I water? give you a bit of background on that? Uh, I can tell you that the, my next door neighbor here to the right really didn't like his view blocked by trees. And some of those trees over the years probably got a little bit of help in dying off. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't suppose that it would change if you put trees back in either. <laughs> Well, I, and, and I was going to ask about uh, about salt and uh, and that sort of thing on the road, um, you know, because everything right now runs but runs down towards the lake. So, sure. I mean, that may be something that we'd want to consider as well. Yeah. And and Peter, to your point, uh, you know, early on in the project, one of the things that we discussed was uh, any sort of tree or a tall planting in this area. We we need to be careful of. Uh, we know that uh, that the views are an issue. We also know there's a power line overhead. So, um, so these are all things that we that we need to consider. But um, yeah, yeah on that, yeah, on that score also. Um, in recent years, Donna and I have noticed uh, it's our impression that uh, vandalism along this rock wall stretch has generally decreased. And we think that one of the, there are two reasons for it. One is there's not as much concealment as there used to be. The shrubs are a lot lower. There are no trees there to uh, offer groups of people the chance to kind of <laughs> hatch stuff. And the second is the police force here have been doing a really great job of patrolling the area. But uh, certainly you, you probably don't want shrubbery in which people can deal drugs. Right. Right. So one As, of the things that we talked about, um, sorry, Jessica, did you no. want to... No, I was just, go, just going to uh, agree and that uh, as we think about the landscape strategy and um, the heights of plantings, location of plantings, there's uh, stormwater um, uh, safety um, experience views, all of these things will go into thinking about the strategy behind the planting that we, we go forward. And that's sort of the next step. So, you know, once we set the configuration, then we can overlay that planting and take all of those things into consideration. So thanks for the feedback. And one of the things I discussed with the board and also with Jessica and Jeff was the idea of putting out a survey so that residents can choose between um, concept A and concept B. I, I am a little worried that they may look at them and without getting the whole discussion as we have today that they, I don't know if they would be able to have the most informed decision as we are able to have today by listening to the explanations and talking it out. Uh, so that's still something to consider whether we do a survey to make the final decision or not. Personally, I agree with what Tom said too, trying to do a hybrid, you know, driving in and parallel parking just wouldn't work and, um, or would not work as well. And it might be choosing between A and B and there are certainly choices and concessions that would have to be made by people. Tiffany's uh, recording this, correct, Rhonda? Would there be a That's way to correct. save this so people that weren't able to get in today come on later and look at it? Yeah, it is being recorded to Facebook, so it will be on that. 
and people can view it there. Yeah. Uh, just to wind up the part, my last comment on the parking thing, um, I think you've convinced me the, the, the lack of safety involved in trying to back out of the space, that's pretty much the clincher. It's, it's, it's certainly something to consider, for sure. Yeah. Before we wrap up, does anybody have any other comments or any other questions while we have both Jeff and Jessica here? Um, Rhonda, I do have a question, but it's not for our, uh, um, for Jeff and Jessica, though I, I'd like to thank them. Um, is the town now completely committed to the idea of replacing that existing rock wall with some other structure? Well, we'll still be going back to the board. Um, we are, you know, for discussion on this. We are also um, looking at um, a grant that is being put out by the Department of um, Conservation in, in applying for that for next spring and then just moving forward. I mean, this is the very first phase and then we'll be discussing um, continuing to move forward. But for my part, I don't want to just stop here and then shelve the project. So for my part, it would be continuing on. Right. Is there in this meeting of the board that you mentioned, um, it, would that be open to the public? Yeah, all the select board ones are. I mean, right now we're doing them on right. Zoom. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'll be putting it on the January 5th agenda necessarily but maybe on the well i may discuss it a little bit i'm trying to keep it on the agenda each time okay okay thank you yeah there one other thing i wanted to share with you briefly before i let you go this is a precedent image that i was just published in a blog that oh, um, yeah, the one I that you sent over. yeah I sent it yeah, to Jeff great. and I thought it was really beautiful um it was just published um uh, December 15th so it was uh, since we we met with Rhonda earlier this month um this is a brand new park in um in Germany oh goodness where is it in Germany it's right on the southern border on a lake between um Germany and and Switzerland so there's there's, there's Switzerland there's Germany um so it caught my eye in thinking about Wilson Lake um, and this access point. So here you have riprap. You can see they've chosen to go with a really naturalized uh, kind of wild vegetation right along the edge of the riprap. And then this stair access way, you can see here on this side, you can actually um, sit on these stairs here. So you can kind of kind of sit down and look out. And here is your access point. And um, thinking about this relationship between your stairway access and the riprap configuration that we have shown, I thought it was a really nice example. You know, they have their, their handrail, you know, beautiful European design. Um, and then these are obviously sort of molded, um, molded to kind of look like these natural, um, natural stones that are here adjacent. Um, and there's kind of a close-up view. So really beautiful waterfront park. Um, there's more of a beach area. But anyway, these steps just kind of caught my eye in thinking about what um, this lakefront could be. So just a little bit of inspiration as we think about aesthetics moving forward. Super. Thank you very much. OK, well, um, thank you, everybody. Yeah. And I think if there are no further questions, um, we will end for today. We will be putting this, as we just talked about, on select board agendas and for moving forward. And I'll be talking with Jessica and Jeff. And if actually, if, if the two of you could stay on, then I can discuss this sure. with you right now, too. Great. OK. And Tiff or David, also, if you want to stay on, too, Frank. and. Okay, thank Here you very, very much for doing this today. I nice. really appreciate this. Nice thank to you. see you all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you.